Hey, welcome back to another fun and exciting episode of Business Growth Time. With me, as always, is the one and only Janet E. Johnson, where today we're going to be talking about everyday reels for her E-word. And we got another E-word in Ed Troxel. And Ed's going to be talking about the importance of video for you in your day-to-day marketing efforts. Now, before we get into Ed and his story and all the magic he creates, Let's say hi to Janet. I see there's like one shoulder hanging out. It's not a full, it's not a cold <laughs> shoulders thing. It's a cold shoulder kind of day. I know when I put that, I'm like, this is a different top, but you know, it's kind of a one cold shoulder. It's I don't know. You're so. like, my right shoulder so warm. My left shoulder. <laughs> Jeez, that's awesome. Are you good? Very good. Yes, we're doing real good here. We have rain in 65 degrees in Minnesota. That's really weird for the middle of November, but you know. And we just we just dated our podcast there, but that's okay. That's it. That happens every now and again. Now yeah. and again, we do that. Um, speaking of, I don't know about rain or cold, but we're gonna kick it over to the West Coast. Go just uh, Sonoma Valley kind of area. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about wine to go with this video. Do you make video of wine drinking, Ed? Is that a thing? Oh, that is such a great question. And fun fact, I have done that in the past. Yes, I actually had. A client, funny enough, not in Sonoma County area where I live and where the wine is going on, but Southern California down in San Diego, where I had a client who had a vineyard and we did a lot of videos of the wine down there. So yes, that has been a thing. Love it. I love it. I love it. So, Janet, I, I assume you know Ed better than I do because Ed and I go back about four and a half minutes at this time. So, and you both were on the call. So, if nothing else, you've known him longer. Um, so, can do you want to yeah, do Yeah, I'll give you a little thing? intro and then I'll let him introduce himself. But bottom line uh-huh. is Samantha, who was on our show. Yeah. Just recently introduced us. She said, Oh my gosh, you've got to meet Ed. And so when Ed and I met, we hit it off. And I was like, Video, video, video. We, you know, we can talk video all day long. And so I said, This would be perfect to have you on our show. Ed comes from a background. Now I'll let him explain his whole story, but I know right now that your expertise is really in the real estate video and coat with coaches and teaching them how to be on video but we'll get more into your tips and tricks and that kind of thing but ed tell us how did you even start with getting shift your business into this training yeah great question well when i became a full-time entrepreneur i decided that i had to figure out how to stand out right i mean who's going to find me online sure i can have a beautiful website Sure, I can have all these products and services, but how are people going to find me and how am I going to stand out from the hundreds of thousands of others that are out online doing the same thing? So for me, I had to figure out what's going to make me stand out. And it was video, which is great. I figured that out. But then I jumped back into my introverted ways and was like, whoa, I don't want to be on camera. (laughs) I can be the guy behind the camera. I can tell people how to do things in front of it, but I do not want to be the one in front. I don't I don't want to show my face. I don't want to hear the sound of my voice. And I really, I don't want to be in the spotlight. But I knew that if I wanted my business to survive and not go back to a nine to five, I had to do this. And I had that real conversation with myself in my backyard and told myself, you're either going to make it happen by staying in front of the camera or you're going to take a chance of it maybe not working out so well, and you're going to have to find another full-time job somewhere else. And so from that day on, I started uh, what at the time was called Ed Talk TV. I went through five days a week and did a live streaming show. Uh, you know, I, I kind of played around with different things prior to that, but really it came obvious that I needed to show up daily and be able to help not only my audience find me, but also help me find myself and where I fit into the marketplace and be able to really get a voice online and feel comfortable and confident with showing up as the expert and being able to help serve as many people as possible. So it started there with uh, live streaming. What? Okay. Okay. And where were you live streaming out of curiosity? Ah, so if those uh, are, if anybody remembers Periscope, 
that was that was a big thing back in the day. And um, and I actually started on Periscope because they they were out before Facebook. But even when Facebook got their live streaming option and I had an audience on Facebook, mind you, not on Periscope, really, I still was afraid to go live on Facebook because I was afraid of judgment from people who knew me. And I felt more comfortable being on Periscope because it was strangers and it just felt more comfortable. But of course we continue to evolve and we also pay attention to the trends. We also pay attention to what the platforms want from us and we have to keep up with technology, which is why I started to incorporate Facebook and really go heavy on Facebook. And then of course, as the other platforms developed live streaming, you also expand to those. So it's really starting where you're at because video can be complicated, as many of us know, and those who are listening probably haven't recorded their videos like they're supposed to yet. And so they know the struggle. And the struggle is, you know, don't think about starting at level 20 with a full on, you know, YouTube channel optimized all the thumbnails and everything. If you haven't even started recording one short form video that you could put in your Instagram stories or on TikTok, right? Like, Start where you are and evolve over time. I uh, I want to go back to the conversation you had with yourself in the backyard because I can imagine that a lot of Ernie, our audience named Ernie, because, you know, huh. E-words, uh, I would imagine a lot of them don't necessarily love the sound of their voice, don't like looking at themselves on video. And so I'm curious as to, you know, A, you have to acknowledge that that's an issue, right? And then... What were the steps from that point that made you say, you got to, listen, if I don't do this, I'm going to go get a job. So there's, there was conversation in between there that kind of propelled some action. How'd you, how'd you do that? Great question. Yeah. Uh, first off, you have to acknowledge, like you said, you have to be aware. Awareness is key, right? For anything that we do. Then the next thing is figuring out what are your alternatives? So if I want to have that flexible schedule and I want to be able to have the flexible income and be able to do what I really want to do and help serve the people I really want to serve, that's going to have different requirements versus me going and signing up for uh, a job, a nine to five job. Right. And so that's another thing that write this down. You know, one of the things that I work on first with my clients is mindset because that's the main equipment you have to get in order to be able to provide everything else. And so while most are worried about, you know, what camera, what microphone, what lights, all that, no, start with your mindset and start with that awareness factor. And then from there, start shifting the things that you're telling yourself because your brain believes everything that you tell it. So if you say, I don't like the sound of my voice, it's going to say, yeah, I don't like the sound of your voice either right? And so you have to start shifting that. And a simple exercise that one could do is grab a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle, and on the left side, put things that are going on in your head, like everything that you're telling yourself. And then on the right side, go ahead and shift that, shift it to something else. So if you're saying, you know, nobody wants to hear from me, then on the other side of the page, you're going to say, everyone can't wait to hear from me. You know, it could be as simple as that because we all do have an audience out there and they're waiting for us to show up. They're waiting for us to deliver our knowledge, our valuable information that we've spent so much time, money and energy accumulating over the years. Why wouldn't you want to show up and share that with your audience and allow them to engage when the time is right? Absolutely love it, right? I tell people all the time, it all begins and ends within the seven and three quarter inches between each year. I have a very large head, right? So some people might be six and a half inches, but it's so important, right? And I love your exercise. Draw the line. Here's the left side and here's the right side. And for me, it may be nobody wants to hear from me and I feel that. And on the right side, you know, maybe everybody can't wait to hear from me is too much for you but maybe 10 yes. percent of your audience wants to hear from you and maybe that feels better right so 
you don't, I loved your point about start where you are and, and continually make forward progress. So very good stuff, man. That's super helpful. Janet, I know you've got more better questions, so please go ahead. No, I, well, well, let's spin off of where you start. Yeah. So you mentioned like jumping on a story or, you know, doing a quick video. So what is your recommendation for like, for continue, you know, getting started, where should they even be? Like where, you know, what platforms or should they just be on their website? You know, like where should they, they be putting this content that they're creating? Yeah, great questions in there. Cause there's a few. Uh, there was a few. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there. it's good because it, everyone listening right now is probably thinking the same thing. And so we want to unpack that, right? And so when we think about what platforms, because everyone's going to be obsessed with, you know, do I show up on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook? Do I go on all of them at the same time? First, break it down. One, where do you feel most comfortable showing up? For many, it could be Instagram. So we'll just use that as an example. So now that we know that Instagram is the one that you prefer showing up on, then the next question is, is your audience there? Because again, you could show up on any platform and do whatever you want, but if your audience isn't there, it, it's going to be a little challenging. doesn't mean you can't still show up there, um, but it's just a little more challenging. So assuming that your audience is on Instagram and you do feel comfortable with Instagram, the next thing is, what do you feel comfortable with posting? If you haven't recorded your videos yet at all, then you probably want to start with being offline, meaning you're not on any platform. You're picking up your phone, you're looking at your camera, and you are recording a video right on your phone. You're not posting it anywhere. You're just getting used to holding it and looking at the piece of technology. Because currently, you're thinking this is still a phone. This is still just your iPhone. Sorry, Android users. Um, you're just an iPhone. But I want you to shift that thinking. Again, going back to the mindset. This is not a phone. This is not your computer. This is your personal assistant. Give it a name. This is the person that's going to help you with recording your videos. They're always with you. Mine is Ava. She's awesome. She helps support me through everything. She helps me book my appointments. She helps me check my email. She helps me record my videos. And she helps me get my videos to the next place, whether that's my website, social media, editing, whatever it may be. So start looking at your technology a little differently and start thinking about where do you feel comfortable showing up first? Now, when you record your videos, and we'll just stick with the, the phone for a second. When you record your videos on your phone, record them, but do not delete them. Do not delete. The reason why is because I want you to record the video one day, save it, and then the next day, go watch the video. It's really, really important, especially when you're starting out, because you're going to be your worst critic, worse than anybody else on the internet. Let me just tell you that. But it's important for you to be able to watch it because you're going to realize, and I know this because it's happened to me personally as well, that you're not as bad as you think you are. And you're going to see areas that you can improve on for the next one. And then you're going to record the next one and you're going to watch it and you're going to see those improvements. And then you're going to see other things that you can change. And it's just part of the exercise. It's like working out, right? You continuously do it, whether you go to the gym or you run or whatever it may be, you continuously do it and you start getting better over time and you start seeing results over time. We're in it for the long haul. So Make sure that you're not trying to just do a quick fix. You're not trying to get rich quick scheme. You know, you're not trying to go viral to, you know, get a million views, but then you have nothing set up to handle all that. Like this is the long-term game. If that stuff happens, great, but we're going for the long haul here. Um, so that's what just on your phone. And now let's take it to social media for a second and realize again, start where you're comfortable. So if you're on Instagram, and you don't even know how to create a reel or what to do with a reel, then back it up and start with stories 
And the reason I say that is because most people that I've talked to and have worked with, stories feels comfortable for them because they felt that they've already posted some photos there, maybe a video or two, but really they just feel comfortable because it's more private, right? And it's only good for 24 hours. So start there and start playing around with the video options in that piece of Instagram. And then you can expand from there. You know, everyone talks about Instagram reels and, and that's that's how you're going to get seen and everything. But again, if you're not there yet, don't worry about it. Start where you are. Yeah, that was really good. That's a that's a lot of really good tips and broke it down yeah. in a in a meaningful kind of, hey, this is the path. Right. And again, going back to that whole just start where you are. So. I'm an Android user, and so thanks for you know calling us out too. Yes, uh, my I have a new slogan called "Be More," right? That's just kind of my moniker right now. So I'm debating: Do I want to name my phone Morris, like as in Morris Day from the time? I like that. Do I want to give it a little French feel, Maurice? Oh, right. Ooh, you know, it's got a little. You know, it's kind of fun, and then. I, I go back to like Maury, Maury, Maury. So oh, I'm really, gosh. I'm really intrigued by how this assistant is going to help me. And <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to give that more thought. And I like that idea. And it's such a valuable construct. So yeah, like this is, this is such a big piece of tech that we can use to our value, to our benefit. And yeah. equally, when we're doing all this stuff, right? It's for the value of others. It'll add value to us for sure. But if we're doing it right, it's value to them. And then some of that trickles back through to us, right? Is that kind of the, the overarching thought, Ed? Oh, yeah, for sure. And here's the thing. The beauty of the world we live in right now with the technology that we have and the way social media platforms are, you don't have to be perfect. That's the beauty of it. In fact, the more raw, the better in terms of your setup and not having to have everything mm -hmm. picture perfect, you know, and that's the beauty of where we're at. So that's why I want people to take advantage. And that's why I'm on this mission to help more people get in front of the camera and be able to discover what has been there for so long inside of us, as well as for our audience and be able to be able to have what I call video positivity, right? It's being able to feel comfortable in our skin and be comfortable online in front of the camera, connecting with our audience, whether we get to see each other on a Zoom meeting or we're just speaking to the world through our social media feeds. I love it. I love what you just said because I say that to clients all the time. It doesn't have to be perfect. The more authentic you are, if it's messed up, it's probably better. I remember my the first video of my client. The, these client this client makes like a few hundred thousand dollars a month with TikTok ads. So we've done a lot with Facebook ads too. But I remember he had the this this, and then it, you know, so his finger went out, and then he you know when you hit the button, and that was the beginning of it. We never cropped it off, and it still did extremely well. Like it was. You know, even that imperfection, you know, maybe you should cut that out, but I mean, we did kind of, but it was still kind of there. So, it's, you know, you don't have to be perfect at all. I think, honestly, I've seen those work better than the high, highly produced type. Yes. So it tends just get, you know, I, I'm always like, just get on camera, get used to it. So I think you guiding them through that is, um, I'm kind of just shove them. I just shove them there. You know, I'm not as patient as you are maybe, but, and some people just won't do it, you know, and that's what, what happens if you have somebody that just says, I absolutely will not get on camera. What, I mean, what, what's your advice for them? Yeah. Well, to back up for a second, it's so true that so many of us will have that hesitation and so many of us, especially right now, if we haven't even started, we're already thinking well, it's never going to happen. We can't do it. I mean, I've been there. I've done that. And it's one of those things that, again, we have to look at what do we want? What do we want for ourselves? And what do we want for our business? And what are the options that are out there for us? And when we look at social media, 
being a huge opportunity for businesses to market themselves, whether organically or paid. We have to look at the platforms and what platforms are we showing up on and what do they want from us? And almost across the board, every single platform wants video. So right there, again, you're talking to yourself, right there, if you wanna succeed and you want to use social media, again, whether or not you love it or hate it, because that's a whole nother conversation, it's for business. If you want to use social media and you want to show up on these platforms and they want video, well, guess what? You're going to have to give them video. Ideally, you're going to give them video with you in them. Hopefully your face at some point, hopefully your voice, right? It doesn't have to be every single day, every single video with you in it. Again, the more you can get in front of that camera, the better though, because we know that we like to do business with people we know, like, and trust. And when we can see a friendly face and be able to listen to what they're sharing with us, we're more inclined to do business with them or at least ask follow-up questions versus seeing some cool logo flash across the screen with some text, calling it a video and checking the box, right? Like just because we're saying video doesn't mean you can get away with throwing something together like that. Um, Again, start where you are, but let, let's keep keep moving forward on this video journey. So really make sure that you're paying attention to what you want, what you want for the business, where you're showing up, what the goals are. That's why I also mentioned the viral thing. You know, a lot of people hear about going viral and they think that that's a goal for them. Maybe that's a goal for you, but I'm going to say it's not because you're probably not set up for what would happen if you did go viral. How are you going to capitalize on that attention? Do you have systems in place to get that audience into your email funnels, let's say for email marketing? Do you have a way to, um, you know, we think about if you've ever watched Shark Tank, they'll have people go on the show and their websites crash. So they've lost all of that attention because they were impacted all at once and now they don't have those eyeballs again because you only get those eyeballs for that 15 seconds of fame, right? So if you're lucky, maybe four seconds these days. Um, <laughs> so really understand what is it that you want and what is it that the platforms want from us and then start building out that next step for you. And so go back to your question, Janet, for the um, people that are thinking they're just never gonna get in front of the camera. One, I will tell you, Let's talk because it will happen. Um, I have one client who she was terrified of being on camera and would not show her face and, and just felt like, you know, especially with privacy and everything, it just wasn't for her. And not only has she done some videos where she's in front of the camera, but most of her videos now are of her showing off her uh, products. She, she's a product. Uh, she has products that she sells. Um, and so she's showing off those and, and the options of painting and the hands. So there's ways around that while still having your voice be shared and then popping in every so often, right? Um, and then there's other ways that you can do it where you're, you know, for example, when I'm working with real estate agents, don't just show the house, but do a walking tour. And again, you don't have to show your face, but again, you should, um, but you can show your feet moving, right? Or your hands showing, here's the park, like you were showing us earlier, Janet, with the with the touching of the um, camera, which is actually funny because my opener for my live show back in the day was me doing that <laughs> and having this. It was awesome. <laughs> You talked about attention, and, and we know that we live in a hyper ADD world these days, right? So uh, t how, much, how much attention should we expect? What's the timeline of the videos, you know, because that numbers seems to keep getting smaller as time goes on, right? The videos seem to be shorter every, every year. So where are we today? Yeah, so... Every time that question comes up, because it's a very common question, how long should my videos be? I always say it depends. It depends on how long it takes you to get through your content. And that could be, and it also depends on where's that video going. If it's going on TikTok, well, you could have it a short span of a few seconds. You could have it as up to 10 minutes for some accounts. Like 
it again, it just depends on what that video is, what's the purpose, where is it going, and who is it really for? And so my biggest uh, advice is write down that piece of it, like what's the topic, and break it down into what I like to say, three talking points. So you have your topic, you have your three talking points. How long does it take you to get through that? If it takes you a minute, great. If it takes you 20 minutes, great. You can always edit down if you need to, but don't rush the process. And again, if you're just starting out, you might do better with short, quick videos that are 30 seconds, 60 seconds, just to get used to it. You also might be on the other side of the, the um, spectrum here where you are doing better with 10, 15, 20 minute videos that you may not post the whole thing, but you can go in or someone on your team can go in and edit out 30, 60 second videos from that or two minutes, you know, that's the beauty of it. So we just need to get you to start recording videos, start sharing your knowledge, becoming that online expert in your field, and then be able to start diving into the more specifics of, okay, how about you how about you chop this up a little bit more? How about you get this a little bit shorter? How about you expand on this? You know, how about you start a YouTube channel? What about getting a thumbnail? Let's get you a team that can help support that. Like there's all these layers, these steps in your video journey that you could take, but let's be honest, you don't have to take. And again, that comes back to you, your brand and what you're trying to do and knowing that there are all of these options available that you could get to them if you would like to and want to at some point. But again, you need to start where you are and start recording videos and getting out there because the more you do that, the more comfortable you get, the more you start to discover what you like, what your audience likes and how you can fine tune that and who you need to bring on to your team to help support you with any edits that you want any scheduling that you want, any ads that you want, like this one thing that you can do in your business can help unlock so much for the rest of what you're trying to accomplish here online. You, you bring up such a great point that there are so many variables to it. And I, I think that's a large part of what people are like, I'm not doing it. I don't even know where to start. So your advice is exceedingly practical, right? Start where you are, just hit the record button. You don't even have to share it, right? right. Just record some stuff and then kind of figure out the cadence. I, I do a lot of uh, public speaking training, right? I coach people how to be a better presenter. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's, it's practice, right? You're not going to go out and land a TED talk if you've only given one talk to the boardroom at your office. That's not how it works, right? You got to earn those stripes a little bit. And it's the same thing with video. Uh, this has been, this has been excellent. Janet, do you have, do you have any other further questions or is it? Uh... I, well, yeah, I have one more further question oh, because it's been on my mind. Um, what are your best softwares for video? I mean, what, what are your recommendations now? This is a little off the, you know, our topic, but it isn't because we all need softwares. Like I've been playing with um, the one that's related to TikTok lately, but there's a few that I use. That one's called, look at me in my eyes, CapCut, CapCut. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Yeah. But that's related to TikTok. But what are you, what are your, some that you play with or recommend to your clients? Yeah. So uh, that's a, that's a popular one right now, especially because it's tied to TikTok. Um, mm -hmm. Another app that one could use is called InShot. That's another easy editing one. So again, we're getting into the tech piece here. And so that's for editing. But listeners, remember, you can't edit something you don't have an actual copy of yet. <laughs> so, so start with the video. And then once you get the video, you can have the editing or send it to somebody else to do the editing for you. So um, we're sharing these tips, but just so you know that, that you don't have to start there. Um, so InShot's one. And then here's the cool thing, because people love using the platforms, Instagram or TikTok, they have built in options that can help support you with that. TikTok a little bit more than Instagram, but 
for example, you can you can create a quick story or a quick reel and chop it up. So you can have quick boom, 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 and not have to go through and edit things out, right? And then you can add music or tags or or whatever you want on there. So again, if you're comfortable with the platform you're using, look into that first for editing. But then you can also look into other ones like InShot is, is another user-friendly one. You know, my whole thing is all about how do we make this simple, easy, and effective for you to implement today, not someday down the line, because that someday is never going to come as we already know from before. So what can we get you to do today that's going to be simple and easy? And what tech can be involved that's going to make that seamless for you? So I'd say InShot. I've heard that from others too. So that's awesome. All right. Awesome. This was so good, Ed. Um, let's leave with one final tip. Well, I know what your final tip would almost be. Just do it. Just get on the camera. <laughs> so one other final tip. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. I mean, basically I'll leave you with the three keys to your success and it's going to be show up, deliver and engage. You have to do it in that order. And that's what's going to help you in anything that you do, but especially video. So three keys to success, show up, deliver, and engage. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Mm -hmm. And so where does Ernie find you when they're like, oh, my God, I have to do video. This is my Sherpa. I can't wait for him to guide me up the video mountain. Where do they, where do they catch up with you, Ed? Yes. So the best place will be my website. So Ed Troxel, that's Ed, T-R-O-X-E-L-L. -L dot com and if you really wanted to get specific you can go to uh forward slash explore and it will have all my social links and then the, some free guides for people to be able to take their next step in their video journey before janet hit the record button i told ed that i have serious website envy <laughs> I, I have if fomo for websites was a thing i would have that <laughs> This site is great. Good job on that, for sure. You'll find lots of value there, as hopefully you found in this conversation. Janet, where do they find us? Well, we businessgrowthtime.com is the easiest place to go, but just put that forward slash, like Ed had just said, do the go straight to the blog, go forward slash blog, and you'll find... We're at about 195 episodes at this point. So we're doing, we're getting up there. We're getting close to that 200 mark. And we have such great content that even a lot of it is even evergreen that we've talked about. I mean, like what, what Ed just talked about is evergreen. Yeah, we may be talking specific strategies for specific platforms, but getting on camera and getting on video is never, go you could listen to this in 10 years and it won't go away. So, mm -hmm. Bottom line is we have a lot of past episodes that with great content and that's the best place to reach us. If you guys loved this episode, loved past episodes, we would love a review on iTunes as well. We would love to hear of what your thoughts are. So thank you I'd so much. I'd love a review on Spotify because it's oh. cooler. Oh, he wants Spotify. Yeah, because he's not the Apple guy. All right, we'll end <laughs> with that. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you for coming on, Ed. Thank you so much for having great, me. Great stuff. Thank you.